Hey, I'm Sven from the Big Music Project. The last time we created a simple test tone generator. In one of the next sessions we go to add MIDI to it to make a simple synthesizer. But to do this, we have to first look again into the LV2 internals. And especially to the data structures used in LV2. We already worked with audio data and controller data which are communicated through their respective ports. Both are stored as FLOAT. Either as arrays or as single values. Float is a 32 bits floating point value format and consists of a sign bit, an 8 bit exponent, and a mantissa of 23 bits. Thus, float has a precision of some 7 digits. This is enough for weakly processed audio data as it can take up a 0 dB amplified signal next to a minus 130 dB amplification. And be sure, nobody can hear them together anymore. But you already saw this floating point limitations on another point before. But LV2 also provides a way to communicate floating point values of higher precision, or integers, or MIDI data blocks, or strings, or any data. And this can be done via LV2 atoms. Atoms are a type of memory data structures. They consist of a head and a body. The head consists of two unsigned 32 bits integer values, the total size of the atom in bytes, and a code number for the type. The body contains a plain binary data to be stored, like a double, or an integer, or a string, or an array, called vector here, or whatever you want. You can name these atoms by assignment with the key. This is then called a property atom. But this is not enough. Atoms can also take up other atoms. And these atoms are called objects. And you can put all other LV2 atoms in there as properties. Optionally, you can also add a timestamp prefix. Then we call it event. And multiple events can be stored in a sequence. And now the interesting part. Adore may also provide a data port if the plugin asks for it in the TTL file. This data port is called with the URI atom port with its prefix of the atom definition. This port can be used to receive MIDI data from the door, or to receive or send timestamped plugin parameters of any type, or to interchange data with the user interface. Therefore, the Atom extension and the Atom port are powerful tools for the data interchange. But for now there are open questions. Where do I find these magic type and key numbers? And what about our own declared types and keys? Where do I get these IDs? From there, you are eyes. And thus the whole affair has come full circle. Almost everything in LV2 is declared via an URI. You can find all these type definitions in the LV2 specifications at the Atom side. And you can define your own types by following the subject, predicate, object rule. Which we already know. And it even works without predefining types in the TTL file, directly in the code file. But more about this later. Okay. Now there are all URIs for all the types and keys and whatever, but we still don't have any number. We still don't have any URID. We can get these URIDs from the map feature of the URID extension. If we feed map with a URID, it returns a globally valid number for this URI, the URID. And if we feed map with an unknown URI, it stores this URI and creates a new URID. So we can use these URIDs for types and keys and formats and so on. And if there is a map feature, there should also be an unmap feature. There it is. It converts back an URID to an URI. This is very useful as the LV2 engine within the door can store the plugin state data or preset data in a TTL file in the subject predicate object format and easily restore them from there. So the plugin programmer doesn't need to take care about this. And next we can take a closer look to MIDI data. Also watch the other videos in this series. For more information take a look into the LV2 tutorial GitHub repository.